All right, good evening everyone. It's Friday night and um, I am just closing out my professional uh, involvement for the day and I wanted to get this lesson up and posted. This is what I promised you that I would do if there was um, any reason that you had to miss school today. And um, sorry about any bad outcomes, especially the one in the soccer match, but what to do, I guess just going to have to move on to other things. So um, this is what you missed. We were looking at arithmetic sequences and there are just many many kinds of sequences but this is a specific kind. It's one where consecutive terms has a common difference as it says here in the little text box. So um, if you were to take uh, one after one previous and subtract you would see a value and if you just keep doing that you're gonna see the same value all right so for example from here to here is minus four and from here to here is also minus four and likewise here and likewise here all right that is actually an additive constant rate of change which means that it somewhat uh, models something that's linear Although it's not really linear because linear uh, graphs, for example, are continuous. There are x can be fractions and whatnot. But here n will just be integers. So um, while the, the, um, it'll graph as a series of points, those points will be discrete. Anyway, so this would be a yes. And your common difference here is negative 4. If you see that... Um, things are decreasing at a constant rate like this, then your common difference would be negative. If it increases, then it'll be positive. So looking on to B here, a uh, little hard to tell with the fractions, but if we get a common denominator, and we'll probably zero in on this one, six, because it's the biggest one, we can um, quickly convert all the other ones to um, some fraction out of six. So one would be six out of six, and then we have 7 out of 6. And then we have 4 over 3, which you convert to 8 over 6. And then 3 over 2 can become 9 over 6. So this is increasing every time by adding 1 6. So this is a yes. And um, here your common difference will be 1 over 6. So there we go. And um, I want to see about the color here. Not super happy with it. So let's see if we can maybe get something that's a little more blue. And then if we look at this, um, from 1 to 4 is plus 3. And then from 4 to 9 is plus 5. And then from 9 to 16 is plus 7. So it's not increasing at a constant rate. Um, this sort of change is not uncommon in a sequence but it's certainly not an arithmetic sequence so this is a no okay this is not an arithmetic sequence so that's what an arithmetic sequence is and that's how you figure out if you've got one um, we now move on to the next item which is the nth term of an arithmetic sequence and it has two different uh, formulas that we can use to calculate it like if we have an arithmetic sequence and we want the 25th term for example that would um, be found using either linear form which is this or recursive form which is the second one and the reason that it's recursive is because n here the term that we're looking for is related to one that comes before it so we have reclusive uh, re uh, recursive rather and so it just depends on what's given to you as to which one will work. And you can convert one to the other. So here it says, find a formula for the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. That's kind of generic. Common difference is 5. So D is 5. And the first term is negative 1. So A1 is negative 1. So if you look up here, um, this has no spot for the first term. It does have a spot for the difference, but then you have this C value that um, that would be awfully hard to get. So um, we're going to use this one because here's D, here's A1, and if we plug in, we should be good to go. So this will be um, 
a sub n equals a1, which is negative 1, plus, all right, um, n minus 1, because we this is just generic, times your difference, which is going to be 5, all right? So we'll clean that up by actually converting to the linear form. So a sub n equals negative 1 plus, and we just distribute this into here, of 5n minus 5, and then just combine things up. So a n equals 5n minus 6. So there it is. And if you want the 25th term, you just plug 25 into here, pop out your answer, and you're good to go. All right. So then in example three, this is going to change up a little bit. They want us to get the eighth term, or actually not get it, but they're giving us the eighth term of an arithmetic sequence, that's 25, and then the twelfth term will be 41. So we can kind of list those things. Um, let's see, a sub 8 is going to be 25, and um, then um, a sub 12, or the twelfth term, is going to be 41. So if you're thinking maybe we can use the recursive formula, which is still sitting up here, um, we don't know the first term. That's a problem. We also don't have a common difference because these two terms are not consecutive. There's like three terms in between. So believe it or not, we are going to go to the linear form. And the way we're going to handle that is we are going to do a system of equations because the only thing really uh, we can plug in values for a sub n and we can plug in values for d but um, other than that um, we can also plug in values for n well just w uh, I'm sorry you can't my bad you, we don't have d but at least we can plug in um, like for this one we can put a 25 and then n would be 8 and so on so let's just go ahead and do it um, so the first one would be 25 equals um, d, which we don't know, times the number of the term, so that would be 8d plus c. So that would take care of that one. And then we'll go on to this one, 41 equals um, 12d plus c. And that's set up really well for elimination because those two c's make a good match. So if we just go ahead and subtract this from the numerator, we're going to add the opposite. So we'll end up here with negative 16. And we subtract 12d from 8d. That'll be negative 4d. And then the c's just subtract out. So divide by negative 4, and d is 4. All right. So then is what's left over is to find what c is you can just plug in D for either equation. We'll just go with the top one. So 25 equals 8 times 4 plus C. So 25 equals 32 plus C. And subtract 32, and I believe you get negative 7 is the value for C. So we can just go ahead and write this out. Um, A sub N equals... 4n plus, uh, I'm sorry, check that. Let's go back and clear that out. Um, clear out now. Uh, minus 7. Okay, so that is the working model that we can use to produce the terms we need. And then they want us to find the first four terms. Well, once we find 1, they should all increase by 4. But I'll um, do them all the long way. So a sub 1 is going to be 4 times 1 minus 7. That's going to be negative 3. So that's the first one. Second one will be 4 times n, which is 2. That's 8 minus 7 is 1. Third one, see how it's 4 more? 4 times 3 is 12, minus 7 is 5, naturally, that would be 4 more. And then the fourth one will be 4 times 4, which is 16, minus 7 is 9. So negative 3, 1, 
5 and 9. Okay. So I'm going to pause this because I have completed the first page and I have each page separate. So um, stand by and let me go ahead and set up for the next page. All right, so here we go with the second page and this is kind of where the fun is going to start. This is a um, sum of a finite arithmetic sequence and um, it enables us to do a bunch of really kind of imposing calculations and you know get totals for things in a manner that will go so quickly that it's uh, it's just going to be something that's really really convenient and kind of fun at least I think so so here's your formula that we're going to use and let me go ahead and see if I can't get this color back to what I need it to be okay um, Alright, so here's your formula right here, and this is just the sum of however many terms we have. That's going to be the number of terms over 2, and that's going to be multiplied to, uh, to the sum of the first and the last term. So, it's, I, I, I love to see the derivation for it. I've been teaching it and using it for years, not quite sure how it was derived. Maybe one of you will be so kind as to look that up, and we'll be able to you know get some idea so if you look at this first thing there's one two three four five six seven seven terms and yes you could throw those into your calculator and it would be great um, for us though um, we're just going to go ahead and use the formula so you can see how that goes so you just identify your first term that's going to be 40 and then your last term is going to be 22 and so um, n here we can just say is 7. So the sum of these seven things will be 7 over 2 times the sum of the first, 40, and this is decreasing, so the first term would be bigger, plus 22. So that's actually 7 over 2 times what, 62? And you can actually cancel out this, so that'll be 7 times 31. And I believe that that is uh, one. Tw uh, I'm sorry, 217. So you could even do that without a calculator, which is pretty neat, right? So that's how that works. So now looking at the next one, the integers from 1 to 35, they're just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, just increasing by 1. So n here will be 35. And your first term is just 1. And your 35th term is 35. So we're going to add up those 35 terms. And we'll get um, 35 over 2 times uh, the quantity of 1 plus 35. All right. So that's basically 35 over 2 times 36 and again the 2 and the 36 can cancel so that's 35 times 18 and although I pretend I'm a genius um, I would pull out a calculator at this point and get the answer which is 630 not bad alright so let's see how this applies down here for this next example this is a little imposing because look 150th partial sum yikes um, imagine trying to do that just by hand without formulas not good and they're giving us kind of the beginning of this sequence but they're not really giving us everything we need because although we have the first term what's the last term mm. so what we're gonna have to do is use the formulas on the previous page to locate that last term so we need the common difference. So look at from here to here, here to here, here to here, here to here. Isn't that always plus 11? So D is 11. Your first term is going to be 5. So let's use the recursive form and figure out what the 150th term is. So we'll just say that um, the 150th term 
is going to be the first term, 5 plus um, 150 minus 1 times the difference, common difference, which is 11. And so that's 149 times 11 plus 5. We're going to get um, 1,644. And that's your 150th term. So wow, that's convenient, right? So now this is kind of like step one. So step two is going to be using this formula, remember that, with these new numbers to get the 150th partial sum. So this is the sum of your first 150 items. That's going to equal 150 over 2 times your first term, which is 5, plus your last term, which we just calculated, 16, uh, 1,644. And here's your speed math for you because it gets kind of big. Well, we can at least put another step in here, maybe 75 times 1,649. And that comes to 123,675. So talk about your basic time saver. That's it. So um, working problems like this where you're missing one of the terms um, is really going to be a two-step problem because you got to find that missing term. So um, let me go ahead and pause because now we just need to go on to the third and we'll resume momentarily. All right, so here we are back for the third and final page. And um, so we're going to do some sort of summation symbol work. And starting out with this top one, um, all you're doing is taking the numbers from 1 to 100, running them through here, which means they double, and then you add them up. So, um, gosh, I wonder if I can just shut this down. Go away. Here comes another one. Always comes in two. All right, so... Um, so back to what I was saying. Um, we're just using the numbers from 1 to a, a, a th 100 and doubling them and adding them up. So um, that's easy enough to do. Our first term is going to be, one, uh, whoops, check that. Let's make that 2 because it's 1 times 2. That would be 2. And then um, our last term is just going to be 200. So we can just go ahead and say the sum of those 100 terms is going to be 100 over 2 times 2 plus 200. And so that's going to end up being 50 times 202. And that you can pretty much do in your head if you just stop and think about it. That's 10,100. So, no problem there. And um, for part B, this is something you kind of need to pay a little bit of attention to because if I, what, we're, what we have here is just the difference between two summations. And if you look at this first one and I say, how many terms are there there? You would say 50. But if you go over here and I say, how many terms do you have here? I bet you at least half of you would say 49. But guess what? you're representing everything from 1 to 100. So if this is 50 terms, this is 50 terms. So resist the urge to just subtract the lower number from the higher one because you're going to be short. All right. Um, just remember that because if you do the same thing here, you'll get 49 terms also, right? So that can't be right. Also beware if they start n with 0. Because if you go from 0 to 50, that is 51 terms. So let's just kind of write this out. And um, we'll just call this A51. And that's just going to produce the number. So that'll just be 51. And then um, A, the 100th term, that's just that 100. And then over here, A sub 1 is 1 and a sub 50 is 50. So let's go ahead and write this out and I'm just going to call this s because there's you know you can't really put a subscript on it whenever there's two things going on. 
So we'll start out with this. That is 50 terms over 2, and that'll be um, 51 plus 100. And we're going to subtract, again, this next one will be 50 terms over 2, and the first term is 1 plus 50. All right? So that'll be 25 times 151 minus 25 times 51. And that's probably a calculator thing. It comes out to 2,500. All right, so that answers that. And we're just down to two more to go. So let's go to these next two. And you're going to see a similarity between this and the last example on the previous page. So we're just supposed to determine the seating capacity. That means the total number of seats in an auditorium with 30 rows. So you got 30 rows. Um, if there are 20 seats in the first row, 22 in the second, 24 in the third, you notice how they're increasing by two every time. So the first term, A1, is going to be 20. And A, um, let's see, D is going to be 2. Now the problem here is that we do not know how many seats there are in the 30th row. So we're going to have to use our recursive formula to get that. So we'll just start out with a 30th row equals um, a total in our first row, which is 20, plus 30 minus 1 times 2. All right? So that'll be 20 plus 2 times 29. And I believe that would be 58 plus 20, which will be 78 seats in row 30. All right? So that's the first thing we have to do. And the second thing we have to do is just use that formula on the previous page to get the total of the, the sum. So this will be the total for these 30. Um, it's going to be n over 2, so 30 over 2. Uh, and our A1 is 20, and our A30 is going to be 78. And that's going to give us a total of 1,470 seats. Very common kind of question. And you handle it, unless there's something a little off in the problem, you handle it just like that. So actually, example 5 will be extremely similar. Um, starting salary when you work for IBM, hopefully it's gone up, is 45000 a year. So A1 is 45000 And that's money, I guess, so we ought to label it. And let's see, they guarantee you a raise of $2,500 per year. That sounds like a constant additive thing. So we'll call that the common difference. That's going to be 2500 all right. They want us to get a grand total for what this person is going to make after 35 years. All right. So we just don't know what the amount will be in the 35th year. All right. We're not going to want to add 2,500, what, 35 times to figure that out. So step one will be to go back to that recursive formula. And we'll just go ahead and say that A35 is going to equal the first year, that's 45,000, um, plus uh, 35 minus 1 times 2,500. All right? And that'll give you a, a value here of 130,000. That's what this person is making at retirement. And that's for the 35th year. So then the next step would be to just do the sum of a finite um, sequence. So let's just say that S35, that's going to equal 35 over 2 times, what's that, 45,000 plus 130,000. And uh, that seems like it's a calculator issue. So this comes to, and this is actually surprisingly small. You would think it might be more. 3,062,000 uh, 
and five hundred dollars so see how that relates sort of back to the one we just did and to that last one on the previous page so that's what you missed and um, you just need to practice this um, when we did this in class I had the room doing this and I would come around and check answers I had people that just did weird things like um, they had everything set up right and somehow got the wrong answer by hitting the wrong keys or one person had like a 43,000 for a starter instead of 45,000 you know just stuff like that so just be careful it's a these are formulas it's garbage in garbage out so anyway thanks for watching I'm gonna close this out have a great weekend and we'll see you on Monday